All right, Saints. Hello, Saints. Come on in. Come on in, Saints. Come on, Saints. Saints. Come on in the room, Saints. Come on in the room. Okay, I can't. Come on in the room. All right. Good evening, everyone. Those of you who are coming on, I can't see your names. Come on in. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. Um, it's been a good day. A beautiful day that the Lord has given unto us. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you again for this another privilege of coming together to study your word. We invoke your presence among us, Lord, wherever we are. We create this sacred space, Lord, for you that we might hear from you. You said in your word, he that hath an ear to hear, let him or her hear what the Spirit has to say to the church. Speak to us in such a way, Lord, that our hearts will be enlightened, that we will grow, Lord, that we will be empowered, and that we will know, God, that we have heard from you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, once again, good afternoon, good evening, rather, to all of you who are on, on and those who are on their way. Go back to 1 Peter chapter uh, 2. We were in chapter 1 last week. We want to go to 1 Peter uh, chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2, and we want to look at verse 1. And tonight, we want to talk about progressing in growth. We want to talk about growing. Uh, what does it mean to grow? Progressing in growth, in spiritual growth. Progressing in spiritual growth. So when last we met, uh, we were in 1 Peter uh, chapter 1, and uh, we were talking about the abundant mercy that had been given unto us uh, through uh, what is called the living hope, and that living hope was through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, not a false hope, not an empty hope, not a deceptive hope, not a dead hope, but a living hope. And that living hope and guaranteed us an inheritance that was incorruptible and um, that 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 we that was a reward reserved in heaven for those of us who believed and accepted Jesus Christ uh, through faith. Therefore we rejoice uh, and because of the genuineness of our faith, uh, the Bible talks about us girding our loins uh, and sobering our minds. Uh, that's what we talked about last. Uh, when we met, it talked, because we're sober in mind, we've girded our loins, uh, we are hopeful, we are uh, guaranteed an incorruptible crown. Uh, he taught, told us in the word, and I believe it's verse 15, in chapter 1 of 1 Peter, that we are to be holy, we are to conduct ourselves holy. Uh, now that we have this new life, we we'll conduct ourselves holy for it is written that we are to be holy as he is holy. And so since now that we know this, he says in verse 22 of chapter one, that we are to purify our souls and obey the truth through the spirit in sincere love of the brethren. And that we are to love one another fervently uh, with a pure heart, uh, having been what? Born again not of a corruptible seed, but of an incorruptible seed through the word of God, which abides forever. 
And then he begins to tell us, because that word is a living word, the grass is all flesh is grass, <coughs> and all of the glory of man is as the flower of the grass. The grass withers, uh, and the flower fadeth away, but the word of God shall endure forever. And since we know this word endures forever, he says in uh, chapter 2, that we are to preach this gospel, therefore. Now, whenever we read that word, therefore, that therefore is a word uh, that is there that goes back to the previous text or the message that was spoken to us. Now, when we are in chapter two, as we're in chapter two tonight, Peter here in this pericope is interested that believers do some growing. He wants, after you have been born again, you have been receptive of salvation, you have a living hope, you now can rejoice because you have this inheritance, um, uh, undefiled inheritance reserved in heaven, and that we're kept by the power of God through faith uh, for our salvation. Um, he says, now that you have this and that you have this uh, incorruptible seed, this incorruptible seed through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. He says, therefore, now I want you to grow. Now that you have this, I don't want you to remain the same. I want you to grow because now he's talking to the church of Ephesus. And listen, they were people just like we had people today where people, um, you know, they have their ways of doing things. Um, they have their uh, moments and um uh, as pastors have challenges with members, uh, Peter had the same situation. And he's saying, listen, I want you all to grow. I want you to grow in the faith. I don't want you to remain babes because now when you come into this body of Christ, you accept this salvation through this incorruptible seed, this word of God. He says, I want you to grow because non-believers, non-believers are a problem in every age. If you're not a growing believer, if you're not a growing believer, hallelujah, if you're not growing, you are a problem. And Peter's saying, I want you all to grow. While some have been in the church for 40 years, and we know this to be true, there have been some in the church for many years, and still there are those who are in the nursery spirituality. They're they're still babes. They've grown. They, they've been around a long time, but they're babes. And we know they're babes by their attitude, their conduct, their conversation, um, their attitudinal. Um, we know that they're babes. When you are maturing in Christ, and that's what we need more, more mature persons in Christ. And he says in the word of God, chapter two, verse one, now that you have this word, now that you're in the faith, I want you to grow. Therefore, I want you to do what? I want you to lay aside all malice. Now, if he's asking them to lay it aside, that means it's there. That means that he is challenged with malice. Now, what is malice? That's a good question. Malice is um, congealed anger. That's what malice is. And the best definition I found is congealed anger. It's solidified in you. It means to have an unforgiving spirit and you carry bitterness with it in your heart. You carry a chip on your shoulder. And this is what he's saying. He says, now you need to pull this off. To take it off is like taking off a garment. To take off a garment. Do you not know it's so sad that we have so many in the body of Christ who wear on them the spirit of malice. They carry it, they wear it, and they don't have any intention of taking it off. And that's why they can't grow. Now, how do you know they're not growing? They're still talking about what happened or what someone did to them 20 years ago. They're still holding on to the past. They don't let anything go. Peter is saying here to the church, he's saying that you got to pull this stuff off 
uh, you got to let it go. In fact, if you read, uh, brothers and sisters, if you read uh, uh, Corinthians, not Corinthians, Colossians chapter 3, if you go there real quickly, Colossians chapter 3, uh, he'll tell you what you need to take off. Colossians chapter 3, go there real quickly if you don't mind. Colossians chapter 3. And go down to um, verse 5, Colossians 3, go down to verse 5 uh, here. Paul is talking in this regard. He's talking to the church of Colossae. He says, therefore, uh, verse 5, put to death your members which are on earth. And he talks about things that you ought to put to death. But then go down to verse 8. He says, but now you yourselves are to pull off these things. What? Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Okay. Now, now notice he says that you ought to lay it aside. He says you ought to pull it off, which is to suggest there are some things in life that God doesn't do. You have to do it. You can expect God to do everything for you, all right? He has certain things for you to do. He says, but you yourselves are to put off all these things, anger, wrath, you do it. <clears throat> you don't need the Holy Spirit to do this. You just need to stop being so mean, <clears throat> whoever the persons are, you need to just stop being angry and bitter and you need to just lay some stuff aside according to Peter and uh, Paul here in, uh, to speak to the church of Colossae. You need to lay it aside, pull it off yourself. God is not going to come in and do everything for you. Now, he also says, pull off filthy language out of your mouth don't lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on a new man. So if you're pulling off an old man, an old garment, he suggests that you put on what? A new garment. Thank you, Jesus. He says, and have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Listen, that means... Now we represent the Lord Jesus Christ. Go back to 1 Peter chapter 2. Go back to 1 Peter chapter 2. Because he's saying, therefore, now that you're saved, you know, people got this thing sometimes, you hear them say, uh, you know, that's just me. That's just who I am. That's just the way I am. That's, uh, that's just me. Well, when you have had an encounter with the Lord, uh, some things ought to change. Some things ought to ought to be different about you. And so you lay aside malice. You lay aside what? Deceit or guile. That's what the scripture calls it. You lay aside deceit or you lay aside guile. Guile, guile is using cleverness to get even or try to make a good impression upon someone. You know, that's what the enemy, that the Satan did. He, he, he was deceptive. Uh, he, he, he tries to make an impression or, or, or he uses his cleverness. Uh, and we have some people like that. He says, in the word of God, you ought to put off this stuff, hypocrisy. That's being a pretender. Pull off what? Envy. And pull off what? Old evil speaking. All evil speaking. Being a slanderer. Uh, you, we have to ask God to bridle our tongue. Uh, the Bible talks about a lying tongue and a tongue that sows discord. Um, he's saying in the word of God, he's saying lay this stuff aside as what? Newborn babes <clears throat> desiring the pure milk or the sincere milk of the word of God. Now, when you come in, when you come in, Yes, there's some things that come with you. But the more you read the word of God, the more you're into devotion, the more you spend time in prayer, the more you pray, 
These things are to fall off. In fact, you can pull it off. You can demand, I'm not cussing anymore. You can speak, I'm not going to be angry anymore. You can speak it, I'm not going to be wicked or nefarious anymore. I'm not trying to get even anymore. And you know why? Because life is too short. Life is too short. God is too good. Uh, Jesus is too real. <clears throat> Heaven is too beautiful. Hell is too hot. And life's too short. And uh, this body that you live in is too uncertain. You don't know what's going to happen to you from one day to the next. So you don't have time to walk around carrying or wearing all this stuff that Peter is talking about in this chapter. Malice and hypocrisy and deceit and envy and slandering and evil speaking and lying to You don't have time to do all of that. Your life could end at any time. He says, therefore, lay it aside. Thank you, Jesus. Therefore, lay it aside. The Bible says, lay aside every weight of sin that so easily beset you. And do what? Let's run this race with patience. Because, listen, you got to run this race. And because this race is not given to the swift, neither to the strong, but those who endure to the end. You got to lay it aside. You got to be intentional about mortifying the flesh and evil behavior. You have to be intentional about what you say and not saying things that are going to cut people deeply and hurt their feelings. You have to be intentional when you wake up in the morning. I'm not going around feeling like this, this anger and anger and bitterness in my heart because number one, Number two, rather, if you do this, the Bible says God will not hear you. I believe that's Psalm 66 and 18. If I abide, allow iniquity to abide in my heart, the Bible says God will not hear my prayer. Some of our prayers have been hindered because we wake up and we are carrying this stuff. We live with it day by day. We are, we are feeling bad and we wonder why we feel bad why are we always upset? Why are we never see any good in anything? You will never see any good in anything with these evil virtues residing on the inside of your heart. Or envy and malice and, and, and being hypocritical and, and slandering people. You're never going to feel good. But once you become intentional and you say, listen, I'm not doing it. I'm not going to have anybody around me doing it. I'm not going to be receptive of anybody around me doing it because now I'm living a new life. He says, as newborn babes. Now, as a newborn babe designed to sincere milk, you know that that milk is the word of God. And the more words you read, all this other stuff you will know you can't do. Just like we're reading this word tonight. And some of you are not saying amen. You're ignoring what I'm saying because you don't want to hear that because you want to carry what you have on the inside with you as long as you want to carry it. You don't want anybody telling you what you can do and what you don't want to have to do. I'm not telling you. The word of God is telling you. And as a believer designed a sincere milk of the word of God, there's some of you and some people that you know, hallelujah, that have been in this life or way or this uh, community of faith for a minute, but they're still babes. They're still babes sucking on milk. Listen, when you begin to drink the sincere milk, that means the sincere milk or the pure milk can nothing be taken from it. It's, it. What's in it, the nutrients, the vitamins, the minerals that are in the milk is there to help the baby grow. There have been some who have been drinking the milk but they're not grown because they want to take out something, some things that are in the milk that's going to help them grow. We want to take out some things that's in the word of God that's going to help us grow. I don't want to read certain passages. I don't want to hear chapter two of first Peter because now it's really cutting down into my soul and to my lifestyle. And, and so you take out you take out certain things, and that's why some people don't grow. But when you drink the sincere milk, the pure milk 
of the word of God as a newborn baby, guess what? You grow. Now, one thing about a baby when it comes to milk, having grandchildren and children, when that child sees a bottle, when that child sees a bottle and recognizes it's milk in that bottle, guess what you see? You see that child squirming. You see that child getting excited. You see that child smiling. That child is reaching and kicking. That child can't wait until that bottle is placed in his or her mouth so they can suck on that bottle to get that milk which fills and feeds the hunger of that body. Well, so it is with the word of God. I wish that when it came to the word of God, that we would have more people that are sincere and would love the word of God so much until they're anxious, they're excited, they're reaching for it. They can't wait to get it because the more words you get in you, the more nutrients, the more scripture, hallelujah, the more verses that you get, the more chapters that you get in you, the more you commit to memory. Uh, the Bible says faith cometh by hearing and hearing cometh by the word of God. The more you receive, the stronger you grow. And guess what? You move from milk to now meat. There's some saints of God that need to be eating meat, which is deeper than what I'm talking about right now, because things such as malice and hypocrisy and envy and stuff like that, people who are mature don't deal with stuff like that because they know this ministry is all about love and people. This ministry is all about winning souls. This ministry is all about being available for God to use you the, the, uh, and all that he has given unto you. And you recognize that it's not about you, but it's all about God. It's all about his kingdom. It's all about the souls that we can win. See, when we get start uh, surpassing the milk stage and start now eating on meat, my God, milk don't even taste good to you anymore. You want something deeper. You want some something deeper, deeper things, deeper revelation. You want God to use you more in the community of faith. He says, as newborn babes desiring the pure milk of the word of God, that you might what? Grow thereby. God wants you to grow. And this is what Peter was saying to these uh, Ephesians, as he was writing this letter, I want to see you growing because when I see you growing, I know there's some things that I don't have to contend with when you are growing and when you're putting on some things. Go to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22 and 25. Ephesians chapter 4. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 22 and 25. It says that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the decept, deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and in holiness. My God, listen, as you grow and you begin to pull off some stuff, you're going to grow in righteousness and you're going to grow in holiness. That's why the previous text says, listen, I want you to be holy because I am holy. That's what the Bible says. Be holy, be, make sure your conduct is holy. In fact, if you go back to verse 15 of chapter 1 of 1 Peter, first Peter, uh, verse 15, chapter 1 of 1 Peter, it says, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. That's verse 15, ver chapter 1, verse 15 of 1 Peter. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all, not just some, not just part-time, not just when it's convenient for you, but be holy in all your conduct because it is written, be holy for I am holy. My God, do you know how many lives and 
uh, uh, a part that would be changed if they would see the holiness of God and the righteousness of God in all of our lives. He says, uh, go back to chapter 2, uh, verse 1. Go back to chapter 2, verse 1. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 1, where it says that we are as newborn babes designed the pure milk of the word that we might grow thereby if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. You know, that's why some people have not grown and have not begun to eat milk, uh, pardon me, eat meat, and it's still on milk. Some of them not on milk because you've not tasted. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. He says, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Listen, when you taste the graciousness and the goodness of of the Lord through his word, my God. When you taste the goodness of his word through his love and his mercy, when you begin to taste it and you begin to grow, the more you taste, the more you want to taste, the more you want to eat. You know how it is when you're eating. You know, sometimes you just say, I'm gonna have a small helping of something or I just want a little swallow or something. But when you get a taste of it, hmm, you say, you know what? This tastes pretty good. I want to taste this again. This tastes pretty good. I want some more of this. That's the way it is with a child of God when it comes to you growing and developing in the manner that God would have you to grow. And when you grow, who are you growing into? You're growing, hallelujah, because you're coming to him as a living stone. That's verse four. So now when I grow, I'm not just growing for a position in the church. I'm not just growing for a title or an office. That's not the reason I'm growing. I'm growing because I'm coming to him as a living stone. Who is the living stone? The living stone is Christ. I'm growing and as I grow, I come close to him. I become more like him. I begin to conform to his image and his likeness. And what Jesus likes, I like. What God wants, I want. The desire that he has, I have. So because I am a chosen person, because I've been drinking milk and I'm now developing and I'm now growing, I come to him as a living stone that's been rejected by men. Now, that's Jesus. Now, listen, you need to know this. As you grow, and the more you grow, and the more you become like him, as Jesus was rejected, expect to be rejected. They're going to talk about your past. They're going to talk about, I remember you when. Now you think you all this. Now you all that. Now you're in the church. You don't know me anymore. It's not about that. It's because you have now become a mature believer, it's now because you have now become conformed to the image and the likeness of Jesus Christ. He says, you are chosen by God and precious, also as living stones. Now, you come to him as a living stone, but we become living stones, all right? Because we become like him. We're little stones and we're built up into spiritual houses. And we are a holy priesthood and we offer up spiritual sacrifices. What is the spiritual sacrifice? That's a sacrifice of praise that's acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. You have nothing else that you can offer him up to him other than the life you give, the work you do, and the praise you offer. The Bible says that we are to present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God which is our reasonable service. Therefore, he says, it is also contained in the scripture and it tells you what the scripture says. And when you read that, it tells you that, that uh, about the chief cornerstone, the stone which was built and rejected, a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. It, it gives you all of that. But then this is, and I end with this. He says, but you are a chosen generation. Verse nine. He says, you are a chosen generation. Do you know how beautiful it is that God chose you? That you were chosen 
because God loved you, that you were chosen, hallelujah, because God had his eye on you. You, you are a holy people. That's what, listen, when you read Deuteronomy, when you read Deuteronomy chapter seven, and you read that in its entirety, Deuteronomy chapter seven, it talks about you being a chosen person. In fact, verse six says this, I believe it's verse six, says, for you are a holy people to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you. That's chapter seven in Deuteronomy, verse six. The Lord your God, this is a beautiful scripture. You need to read this and you need to underline this. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for himself. You're that chosen generation, that royal priesthood. You have been called out and he chose you for himself. That's why he saved you. That's why you have a living hope, not a false hope, not an empty hope, but you have a living hope. That's why we come to him as a living stone, as little stones, because we were chosen. Listen to what the word of God says. The Lord your God has chosen you. Chapter seven of Deuteronomy, verse six, I believe it is. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for himself, a special treasure above all the people on the face of the earth. My God, do you know what that says? That you are so special that God has chosen you and has put you in this category. The Lord did not set his love on you nor choose you because you are more in number than any other people, but that you were, in, that, but you were the least of the people. Listen, that's what the Bible says when you go back to chapter 2. First Corinth, first, uh, first Peter, go back to first Peter chapter two. And this is what, how these scriptures parallel and coincide. First Peter chapter two, go back down to verse nine, when it says, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people that you may what proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. Watch this who once were not a people, but are now the people of God who had not obtained mercy, but now you what? You obtain mercy. That's beautiful to know that I have been chosen and to know that you are a special person to know that God has chosen you unto himself. He calls you out of light. Now, because he done this, guess what? He now wants you to grow. He wants you to not disappoint him, but he wants you to keep growing. You need to be in church. It's come off of Zoom and come back to Zion. You need to be in church. The things that you used to do, some things, you're getting older now, we need to put them aside. He says, we need to, we need to, we need to come back to him. We are chosen people whom God has called out of darkness into his marvelous light. Tonight, I conclude and I close with God wants you to grow. When you grow, nobody has to ask you to do anything that needs to be done for the kingdom. When you grow, so people don't have to thank you even when you deserve to be thanked because you recognize who you're doing it for. When you're growing in Christ, you don't puff up and become attitudinal so quickly when you're growing in Christ. Start on that milk for those of you who have not done it, but don't stay on the milk. You got to move from the milk because you got to eat meat because God wants you to be mature and disciplined. God bless you. I'm done for the night. Hope you enjoyed the word uh, tonight. God bless you. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you tonight for another time of sharing in your word. Help us to grow. Help us to eat, to drink the sincere milk of the word of God that we might be developed, that we might not bring shame to you. God, help us to grow spiritually daily. Help us to read your word, hear your word, absorb your word, may memorize your word, put the word to action, put it in our heart, hide it in our heart that we might not sin against you. God, we thank you that the word of God is still alive. It's a living hope. It's real to us. 
Thank you, God, for being that living hope in our lives. Now, I ask you, Lord, to bless us and all of our intentions. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Listen, give that offering tonight. Uh, go to Givelify. Make sure you give an offering unto uh, the Lord in the Bible study tonight. Love you guys. You all take care. You have a wonderful evening and be safe and be healthy. Lord willing, we'll see you on Sunday morning. God bless you. Take care.